In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with all of you. That we may celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Almighty God and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. May our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, he who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, Take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem, stand upon the heights. Look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on earth, uh, pardon me, Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you. But God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low, and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was the tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Iteria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, the Tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God, the gospel of the Lord. This gospel reminds me of the time I was in Peru. And we had gone down to the wilderness on the border of Chile. My Spanish was not that great. Enough to get by. Enough not to get arrested. Not to get out of it. 
So we're on our way to a new mission. And I'm in the car with three other priests. Or one, three other priests. And the one in charge said, uh, Mark, he said, when we get there, you're preaching. I said, what's the matter? You didn't prepare anything? So after a few miles of that, I let that settle in my head. I go, all right, I'm preaching. I'll handle it. And he says, we're going to a brand new town. I says, really? I says, what's the name of it? He says, the town doesn't exist, and you're going to name it. I says, what? He says, the mayor is going to ask you to name the town. I turned the car around. I had more time to think, and I was just wishing that could have been an eight an eight hour ride. So uh, I said, "What do you name a town? Framingham? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something?" I didn't do it, and I start to pray about it in the back seat. I go, "Who am I to name a town?" And, and so I says, "What do you name a town down here?" And, and the guy said something religious. Well, I got to the gospel. This gospel. And I says, I am not naming this town. I'm going to let the Lord name it. And we named that little town St. John the Baptist on account of this quote. I often think of that town. We went there to establish this city. In the background, all you saw was sandy mountains. Sand all around. We're in a sandstorm. The only thing that existed there, perhaps, was uh, some wells. And uh, anything else, there was not. They were going to build that city from the ground up. From the ground up. There wasn't even one brick laid on top of another when we were there. And the mayor did ask, what do you name this town? And I said, John the Baptist. In the course, in his acceptance of the town, he, refer he also referred back to the gospel and loved the idea. And those people had a lot of work to do in laying out their own village in planning for it. Inevitably, uh, I think all the initial roads were straight. As we come to this Sunday, and I recall this gospel in my own life, and now it's a part of uh, your recollection, what have we done in our own life to this point to prepare the way of the Lord? To build something for him, a dwelling place in our own hearts and souls. Do we allow the Lord to guide us? Are we sometimes put off by the enormity of what might face us and say, this is impossible, I can't do that? Or do we allow ourselves to be led down this road? Today, the words of uh, John the Baptist are echoed uh, from Isaiah 40. We didn't read them this year. Uh, and so Isaiah 40 is what John the Baptist of what is being quoted. To allow the Lord to straighten out the crooked ways, sometimes when we get too high and lofty and proud, or we're down too low, to allow the Lord to uh, come into our lives and straighten out uh, those areas where we can get lost and we can go astray or go off the right road. The Gospel of Luke certainly is a travel account. And as we begin this Advent, uh, Luke certainly, once again the historian, firmly situates the characters in the Gospel in history. And he places them on a road. And John the Baptist lays out this road for us, although I know it's the infancy narrative, there was a road laying ahead. For the Jewish people, for the book of Baruch or even Isaiah 40, they were looking forward to this return from exile in Babylon. Some stood back. They liked the flesh pots. 
others returned, and they returned to rebuild. I think Advent is a time for us to return to rebuild to allow the Lord to lead us, to look at the potholes in our life. Uh, and isn't it nice to have a nice Route 9 paved like that? That's going to be the highway of our return. And that's what they envisioned here in Baruch and Isaiah as a highway of return. Straightened out, but the Lord leading them. What is justice, mercy, and peace being the light ahead of them. Follow that fire, follow that light. So Advent does set out this beautiful task for us that we may be prepared to meet the Lord when he comes. I think it's a journey we can embrace. I think that this road and this highway will be one that we will not encounter any traffic jams. Everything's going to move right along if we stay with the program. But uh, yes, preparing for Christmas is a lot of work. It's catching up with me. And uh, I think today will enable us just to welcome that into our own lives and permit the Lord to lead us as his sons and daughters to lead us. We have to acknowledge that to some extent we are, uh, we do wander in this land. We sojourn in it. And to acknowledge that we need a shepherd to lead us to lead us from darkness into light, from bondage into freedom, from sin into grace, from earth into heaven. So that's what today's reading in the gospel admonishes us to do. I don't know if I'll ever get another opportunity to name a town or a village. However, one was enough for a lifetime. One was enough for a lifetime. But as far as we're concerned, uh, we just keep before us the heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, and in these immediate days, too, the little town of Bethlehem. God bless you all and have a beautiful evening. Let us stand and profess our faith. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God creator of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he arose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father, the Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I think tonight there's just one collection. One. Our offertory is number 53 in your missalette. Savior of the nations come. Okay. Number 53.
this praise is that our hearts and this our sacrifice that these become gifts acceptable to God the Father the Almighty. Be pleased, Lord, with our humble prayers and these offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. He assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory. <laughs> indeed holy, O Lord. You are the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and his resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life in this chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Sean our Bishop, and all the clergy and the religious. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, that we may praise you and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lord, deliver us, we pray from every evil, grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Lord, look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Peace be with all of you. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
It's so nice to have back Eucharistic ministers and altar service. Today we had about eight altar service in training, mostly junior high, so it would be nice seeing them back again. Um, and if anyone still wants to be a lector or a Eucharistic minister, give us a call. The other announcements. Bambinelli Sunday is next weekend. You can bring your baby Jesus figures to Mass to be blessed at any Mass on the 11th and the 12th. Santa Claus is coming back one last time. Pets are welcome, pictures are free, and will be emailed to you. Walk-ins are welcome, and so are donations. Can't be too good to Santa, right? Eighth grade students will be selling wreaths, kissing balls, and decorated winter baskets this weekend after all the masses. Immaculate Conception is a holy day. The vigil masses are 4 and 7 and at 9 a.m. on the day itself. Next weekend, the second collection is for grounds and maintenance. Hopefully, we won't need that for salt and sand. <laughs> Let us stand for our prayer. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly ask you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold fast to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 63 in your missile. Let the King of Glory come. Number 63. Nice and long.